In this sub-lesson, we're going to look at operating system and firmware vulnerabilities. And I'm going to be honest with you, when I was looking at the objectives of the CASP from CompTIA, there were no sub-objectives under OS vulnerabilities, and that's kind of a vague topic. Now with firmware vulnerabilities, we have some specific things. So the approach I'm going to take for operating system vulnerabilities is actually looking at the type of threat agents and threat actors, specifically internally, that we have to deal with in protecting our operating systems. So I'm going to start out with this first table where it shows the many faces of insider threats to our operating systems and, of course, the data that is controlled by those operating systems. So I've got here six different threat actors, okay? So first off, we have the saboteur, and a common example of the saboteur is a disgruntled IT admin or a database admin, and this is an extremely dangerous insider. Next, we have the compromised threat actor, and that's basically somebody who is, doesn't know they're being taken advantage of. For example, an unknowing controller or someone in the finance department that's been compromised because maybe they added a USB key to their system or they were part of a phishing attack. Then we have what's called the IP thief, okay? An example of this is a contractor or a temporary worker who is just simply greedy and is going to steal data to sell it on the dark web or the deep web. Then we have what's called the PII pawn, the personally identifiable information pawn. And this could be a developer or a program in your company who's being blackmailed. Okay. Then we have what's called the media leaker. And this could be an internal hacktivist or somebody who spends way too much time on sites out on the internet or on social media sites and basically just is leaking key data, okay, IP. Then we have what's called the negligent threat actor. And that's just basically maybe a careless manager. And then we have the negligent threat actor. And that could basically be someone like a manager, okay, who's just careless and not adhering to the acceptable use policy. Because maybe the manager thinks that the AUP only applies to the lower level employees and not a manager, a supervisor, or executive management. Another valuable tool to look at vulnerabilities to not only operating systems and application, but also data, is to look at this field threat matrix from IBM. Notice at the top we have our event type. So these are some very common events or incidents that can happen. Accidental leakage, espionage, financial fraud, misuse, opportunistic data theft, physical theft, product alteration, sabotage, and even violence. So they categorize these eight or nine event types. Then you look on the left-hand side or on the vertical axis and we see intent. And intent is broken up into three categories, non-hostile, unknown, and hostile. And then what we do is in this matrix, we kind of see the X's where IBM has gone in and said, these are the likely most probable combinations. For example, where a supplier or a partner, which is unknown to be hostile or hostile, a supplier or partner or most likely to be responsible for the vulnerabilities of an accidental leak or espionage or financial fraud or misuse. Look at the hostile actors. For example, disgruntled insider. I want to focus on that one because the disgruntled insider is actually the most dangerous, most vulnerable aspect of operating systems, applications, and data. IBM filled in every checkbox, okay? So every event type is possible by a disgruntled insider, especially an insider who has privileged access, okay? So that's pretty interesting. Notice that a terrorist, by the way, has the least ability to launch these events. As far as a terrorist is concerned, it can be physical theft and sabotage and violence. So this is an excellent matrix to kind of take to our customers. So at Brio, not only do we combine in our spreadsheets that we use for our open, fair factor analysis and other analysis tools, but we also have a page or a sheet in our spreadsheet that actually has this field threat matrix. It's a very valuable tool. Let's talk about firmware now, because there are definitely some firmware vulnerabilities. One of the countermeasures is to use UEFI, 
Okay, UEFI, as we see here in the diagram, this extensible firmware interface is between the firmware and the operating system. And it's a replacement for the traditional BIOS. And it's meant to standardize modern computer firmware through a reference specification. But there's multiple companies out there that develop UEFI firmware. So there can be quite a few differences between implementation used by PC manufacturers. UEFI functions between the operating system layer and the firmware layer as seen here. Some of the advantages are it's backwards compatible with legacy BIOS. It has the ability to boot from really large disks, terabyte sized disks. It has a CPU independent architecture and a CPU independent driver set. And it's got a flexible pre OS environment and a modular design. That being said, however, there are some firmware vulnerabilities. Embedded systems increasingly use software-driven low-power microprocessors for security-critical settings. Firmware programs are often written in C, so existing source code analysis tools may not work well for this. Intel, Apple, and Android still fight this battle, among many other manufacturers and vendors. Root kits and tools can modify a computer's UEFI so that it silently reinstalls its surveillance tool even if the hard drive is wiped clean or replaced. 